uh, FDA approval of Garden uh, 360 is exciting. Um, I know this comes uh, very quickly and maybe as a surprise to some people, but it's actually been in progress for several years. Um, it means that practicing oncologists, particularly those that take care of lung cancer patients, now have an FDA approved test, which they can use in a variety of scenarios. Uh, one of those, of course, is to uh, be able to look for EGFR mutations and to specify the type of mutation and to use this for first line treatment of these patients with osmertinib, which is a third generation EGFR TKI. But beyond that, the FDA approval uh, also allows oncologists to use this test in a variety of different solid tumors, different kinds of cancers, uh, in different situations. And, and this will be equally as important. Uh, I might just add that uh, non-small cell lung cancer in particular is a poster child for this sort of test uh, because of the uh, large number of mutations which are actionable, meaning that they, we have targeted therapies for them. So this approval is based on two aspects. Uh, one is this is the first approval of a liquid biopsy, circulating tumor DNA. And secondly, that this is based on next generation sequencing. So this is a broad profiling, which allows us to pick up all the relevant abnormalities. There is some confusion about terminology of liquid biopsy uh, in the context we're discussing now. So liquid biopsy means anything that you could measure from a liquid substance. So most commonly we're talking about blood, but this could also pertain to fluid, uh, let's say from a pleural effusion or urine, uh, for example. But by and large, it refers to blood. The premise here is that uh, DNA, as it is degradated, is shed into blood, subsequently into urine, and that the genomics of that person and of a cancer, if they have it, can be detected in blood. So the term cell-free DNA means all the DNA that is shed in blood in this example. That means in a cancer patient that cell-free DNA would mean DNA that is normal, and also DNA which has the mutations that are associated with that patient's cancer. The term circulating tumor DNA refers to that portion of the cell-free DNA which is tumor related. So the entire concept of liquid biopsy is to be able to measure, to quantitate the same abnormalities, again in blood in this example, as we would from taking a biopsy of that patient's cancer. Already for the last five years, guidelines from around the world has emphasized the need for molecular testing in a variety of situations, but in lung cancer very specifically, to identify oncogenes that are present in those cancers where we now have approved therapies related uh, to those abnormalities. So again, non-small cell lung cancer is uh, really the prime example here. In uh, May of this year, we had an unprecedented situation where the FDA approved seven different drug regimens for advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Never been seen in the history of oncology, so many approvals in a one month time. Four of these were related to what we would call targeted therapies, and that is these oncogene-driven cancers. So guidelines have realized this. Initially, these guidelines were focused on uh, EGFR, 
uh, which uh, in the United States is maybe 10 to 15 percent of patients with non-small cell lung cancer. But in uh, countries in East Asia, like Japan or, or Korea uh, or Southern China, this could represent 40 percent of patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. So now we are not testing just for the EGFR. We have added several other abnormalities. We're up to eight, eight different abnormalities to check for. And number nine coming soon, that is the KRAS G12C, because again, just within the last few months, we have uh, drugs which are very active against what we thought was an undruggable target just a short time ago. Well, one thing I think that's important about uh, guidelines is determining when uh, a test or a drug is experimental or investigational and when it becomes standard of care. In the past in oncology, this transition occurred very slowly over a period of years. Now these sorts of things are happening rapid pace. The advancement in technology continues to be refined even for these tests in liquid biopsy so that what we had available three or four years ago is much improved today. Uh, my own interests in liquid biopsy uh, are related to lung cancer. Uh, I co-chair uh, a workshop on liquid biopsy, which will occur on October 2-3 this year, sponsored by ISLC, where we will talk about some of these advances. Already though, two years ago, we published a consensus paper from ISLC related to advanced non-small cell lung cancer, where we talked about the emergence of liquid biopsy, when it should be considered standard of care, where it might be considered still investigational. Since that publication in 2018, the field has moved forward so fast so that some of the areas which we said, well, they're investigational still in 2018 or some targets, they are now translating into standard of care. <music>